The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'm the moderator for today's webinar. I'm Abby Henry, the Oncology Content Manager for Pearl Point Cancer Support. Our speaker today is Margaret Martin. She's Pearl Point's nutrition educator and registered dietitian. Um, Margaret is a licensed dietitian and nutritionist in the state of Tennessee, as well as a certified diabetes educator. Uh, Margaret graduated from the University of Alabama with a Bachelor of Science in Dietetics and received her master's degree in nutrition, science, and public health from the University of Tennessee. She has more than 10 years of experience in clinical nutrition. We'd also like to take a moment to thank the Memorial Foundation for helping make today's webinar possible. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them in the panel on the right side of your screen. Uh, Margaret will be answering questions after the presentation. You can also connect with us on Twitter with the handle at MyPearlPoint, and you can use the hashtag um, PPCSWebinar. After the webinar, complete the survey so we can improve our webinars and better serve you. Um, the survey will both come up immediately following the webinar, and then it will also be emailed to you so you can finish it um, on your own time. A quick disclaimer, ProPoint Cancer Support is not a treatment facility. We are a nonprofit organization that provides education and resources for cancer survivors. The webinar does not provide medical care. Always talk to your healthcare team before changing your diet or if you're having any side effects from treatment. So who is Pearl Point Cancer Support? Um, we're a nonprofit support organization with the mission to create a more confident cancer journey for adults anytime, anywhere. We've been serving survivors, co-survivors, and healthcare professionals for over 26 years. We provide education and resources through My Pearl Point, a website dedicated to educating cancer survivors. Our main focus are cancer education, clinical trials, nutrition, and survivorship. Um, visit My Pearl Point after the webinar to create a free dashboard and receive personalized resources, such as the Cancer Handbook, which we currently have available for multiple cancer types, including breast, lung, stomach, pancreatic, colorectal, esophageal, liver, and others. You can also learn more about side effect management by watching the Eat to Fight video series. And if you go to the home page, you can click on Nutrition and Cancer and then go to the video section to find the Eat to Fight video series. For even more help with side effect management, you can download our free mobile app to your smartphone or tablet. The Cancer Side Effects Helper app is available on iTunes and Google Play. The app offers quick tips to help you manage side effects such as nausea, fatigue, and change in taste and smell all at your fingertips. So I'm going to go ahead and hand, hand things over to Margaret. Good afternoon. Great to have you all today for our nutrition webinar. I wanted to highlight our goals for the webinar today and also let you know we'll be having a few polls as we go along, so be sure to participate in those too to get more out of our webinar. Our first goal is to list possible side effects of cancer and cancer treatment, uh, learn new strategies to cope with aroma, smell, taste, and sore mouth side effects. And know that you can use nutrition to fight the side effects of cancer. And finally, discover where to access additional online resources. All right. Now we know there are a lot of suggestions about, uh, about food and nutrition. I typed in, for instance, nutrition cancer suggestions into a Google search. And guess how many results I got? 33 million. <laughs> so it can be overwhelming for a survivor, a co-survivor, or a caregiver when trying to decide what to eat on their journey. So to not be confused, let's look for some strategies that really work. Nutrition is very important for better outcomes, um, and we're going to define it better outcomes as completing your cancer treatment or your cancer treatment plan as your healthcare team prescribes it. Uh, 
another outcome is to maintain overall health as you go through treatment. And certainly enjoying your daily activities is another outcome. Um, nutrition has at least four components or areas that we're going to look at. Uh, one component is, of course, fluid or hydration. Fluid helps you utilize your medications well and supports digestion and overall health. Nutrition encompasses over 50 nutrients that are essential for health every day. So there's not just one food or one meal uh, that can make you well, but it's a combination of balance of food. Of course, nutrition has a great social realm, too. Eating is, is a social activity. It helps us feel connected when we eat with other people, friends, families, or work colleagues. And of course, weight is very important for a better outcome, especially muscle. So it's important to balance your weight as you go through treatment. So when you're fully able to address each area, you're a lot more likely to maintain your strength for the fight against cancer for better outcomes. Of course, nutrition is also important for a positive outlook and a sense of well-being. When you feel better, often you'll make better food choices. Now today we're going to focus on three side effects um, around the uh, head of the body. In the future we'll be addressing other side effects. But today we're going to look at uh, side effects of aroma or smell problems, mouth irritation, and taste changes. Um, aroma or smell is really the gateway to other other tastes and issues and ability or encouragement to eat. Um, most of the taste that we have really comes from our sense of smell or aroma. And so if you have a change in your ability to smell or have no ability to smell, you'll of often develop a taste distortion or dysgesia. Uh, we're also going to look a little bit at strategies to address a sore mouth. Sometimes during cancer or because of treatment, you might develop uh, dryness in your mouth or maybe irritation or um, inflammation in your tongue and soft areas of your mouth. Uh, you might have dental issues or some new dental issues. These can all deal, um, rather, these can all result in inability to chew well. Um, some of these you might be talked about as mucositis or inflammation of the mouth um, and digestive tract, or xerostomia, dry mouth, from the lack of or less saliva being made. And lastly, today we're going to look at taste. Uh, we talk a lot about taste and good food and nutrition. We don't really realize how important it is, uh, how it influences our appetite until our taste changes, or you might even end up with uh, the ability uh, without the ability to taste. Um, so today, we're going to look at some strategies to address that. Uh, the lack of taste may be related to your mouth issues. And hypogesia is reduction in ability to taste. And agesia is the complete loss of taste. So let's look at what some of the triggers are for nutrition side effects. Um, many triggers can affect uh, your ability to smell, taste, and to have a healthy mouth. If you can select strategies that can address your particular trigger, then that makes a more personalized nutrition plan for you. Um, some of the possible triggers might be memories of food, your favorite food um, can make you hungrier. Um, cancer itself can reduce your appetite or your ability to smell and taste, as can treatments, medications, and illnesses. Um, dehydration or not drinking enough fluids or getting in enough fluids can also reduce your ability to make enough saliva and other fluids to help you digest your food well. And of course, dental issues are key to being a, per a trigger for taste, smell uh, problems and oral problems. And of course, where you're eating. If you're eating by yourself, 
um, alone and you usually were a social eater, that can also trigger uh, nutrition side effects. So let's look at some of these. First, let's think about our changing our food choices as it relates to addressing taste changes. Many times we hear people say um, certain tastes are off or just very different. Uh, for instance, red meat is often a problem survivors have. They may, may have formerly loved red meat, but now they don't have a taste for it. If that's you, then why don't you try swapping out red meat for maybe chicken, turkey, fish, or dried beans and peas. Or try to use salty or sweet meat taste instead of the typical bland meat. So a, a Polynesian chicken or some beans with some nice peppers in them might be one example. If you have less taste, try using tart or highly flavored foods. Um, swap naturally sweet foods for any bitter, salty, or acidic taste you might be having. So instead of a salty ham as an entree, maybe try some sweetened um, pork roast with a nice glaze on it. Also, spices are your friend if you have metallic taste issues. Don't be afraid to use onion powders, garlic, or hot sauce to counteract any metallic taste you might have in your mouth. And of course, liquids help transmit flavors and also help keep your mouth safe and healthy. So be sure to sip in between bites and to also wash out any bad flavors that might be in your mouth. And a typical thing that helps many people is don't try to eat your favorite foods on your treatment days. Because if you have a low point in your appetite, then your favorite food becomes a non-favorite food. So maybe just eat something average to you on treatment days so you can keep a good appetite for your favorite food. Now let's address some strategies uh, for sore mouth. Of course, number one would be choose soft foods if your mouth is sore or if you already have some dental issues. Soft foods might be foods that are baked, boiled, or stewed, or cooked in the crock pot. Those are great substitutions for fried foods or foods that have sharp uh, edges or crust on them. Uh, avoid high acid foods such as tomatoes or citrus fruits if you have uh, a soreness in your mouth or a gum or lip problem. High acid foods like orange juice, grapefruit juice, tomatoes, tomato sauce can be an irritant to your mouth. Choose some of the lower acid fruit juices like grape, cranberry, and cherry and other vegetables like green beans, squash, or mashed potatoes. Another idea is to suck on pieces of frozen food, fruit, hard candy, or an ice. That helps stimulate some saliva to be produced. And try to avoid alcohol, even in over-the-counter items like mouthwash and cough syrup. Alcohol can be an irritant, just like orange juice. And many people find re relief with the homemade mouthwash recipe, where you take 3 fourths teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking soda, and mix that in four cups of water. You might make this fresh every morning, and rinse with a cup of that. Rinse uh, three to four times daily, or by your physician recommendation. Now, let's turn to food preparation to manage problems with smell. Um, some foods have much more aroma than others. Here, this little boy is uh, trying to, I guess, swap a cheeseburger for Brussels sprouts and asparagus, but um, those tend to be kind of high-smell foods. But to help manage your sense of smell, if food is a, a trigger for you or a problem, ask other people to help you cook or to deliver cooked meals to you. Many people want to help help cancer survivors, and it's good to give them a, a specific task to do. Uh, if you're cooking or your family members are cooking, uh, cook at the cool times of day where there's less humidity and therefore there'll be less aroma filtering through the home. 
try to stay away from the food prep area when you don't feel good. If you're cooking, try to cook when you feel the best. You can plan ahead and freeze some foods or side dishes for later when you may not feel well to stand to cook. Um, try new foods if your tastes are changing. I know we're kind of people of habit, and you might not have tasted a certain food in the last 10 years, but now's the time to really try new things or try some old things again. They may be just what your taste buds need. Uh, when cooking in the home, try to be sure to turn on your uh, kitchen fan to remove any cooking smells that might be offensive to you. Uh, when you sit down to eat, you can actually block some of the aromas at your uh, place setting by using straws and cups or cups with lids or cover your food, uh, especially when you're finished so it won't have so much aroma as you're sitting around enjoying friends at a meal. If certain foods uh, that have high aroma are not pleasurable to you anymore by themselves, sneak them into other foods that you already like. You can grate vegetables like carrots or cabbage into gelatin, make your own popsicles or icy. Uh, you can put chopped meat into casseroles and soups. And the flavor of the casserole and the soup itself will really disguise the meat. And you'll find you'll be able to enjoy them again. Um, protein is very important in cancer treatment. So let's look again at some other ideas to help you be able to enjoy the taste of meat. Um, marinating meat before cooking is really quite helpful. You can buy pre-made marinades or you can make your own. Um, there are different flavors. There's hot spicy, there's Chinese or Asian, uh, Tex-Mex. There's just all kinds of marinades you can use to find the ones that suit you. If you just can't taste meat from wheat, just try to substitute other high-value protein, like dried beans and peas, dairy, yogurt, cheese, eggs, or tofu. And of course, now we have protein powders or supplements that have low or no aroma. These supplements or powders can be stirred into foods you already like. Like if you enjoy coffee in the morning, milk, or a milkshake, go ahead and add a scoop of the protein powder. If your food is flavorless or bitter, um, try to match the opposite flavor to help you enjoy it. Um, so if you can't tolerate bitter foods, sweeten them up a little bit with some natural sweetener or pieces of fruit or fruit juice. Also, sauces, gravies, spices, onions, lemons, or condiments like pickles and bacon bits can really help you mask some of the flavors that uh, aren't friendly towards you. During treatment, sometimes food tastes very salty. So if that's true for you, try some of the low-sodium foods. They're very available now, and you can also use herbs and spices. They're unsalted or unsalted broths when cooking. Um, if metallic flavors are a problem, switch and use plastic silverware or chopsticks. And rinse your mouth or brush your teeth before and after eating to help and some of the food particles from your mouth. All right. Now another strategy involves really no extra money, but just looking at uh, changing the temperature of the food that you use. Let's explore that a little bit to address some taste and uh, aroma changes. Cool foods and room temperature foods have much less aroma or smell. So if smell or aroma is a problem, choose cool foods like sandwiches, yogurt, fruit, things of that nature. Um, often it's helpful to start with a cool appetizer to help lessen pain. Um, so that works better than a cup of soup to start your meal out. Uh, cool foods like smoothies, milkshakes, uh, cold soups like gazpacho are a great way to get nutrition without using hot food. Um, shop in the frozen or refrigerated aisles of your grocery store. These have much less aroma and they're far away usually from the deli. Um, the deli areas where they're cooking food is often a problem for folks when they grocery shop. 
also make a list of cool foods you like and share it with your caregiver or friend um, that may want to go grocery shopping for you. Frozen pieces of fruit are great for appetizers or even for dessert. Um, berries, grapes, chunks of banana, pear, melon balls, or cherries work well and have little to no aroma. And if you just can't face a meal, liquid nutritional beverages are great. Uh, be sure to chill them before drinking or pour them over some crushed ice for best results. Now let's think about starting, starting smart. Um, some people, uh, cooking is a whole new area for them. And sometimes they're not willing to or not able to really think about cooking when they're sick or going through treatment. So let's look at some alternatives. Uh, the first way to start smart is to see your dentist before you start treatment. Uh, or if you have some mouth issues that arise during treatment. It's much easier to treat a, a mouth, a lip, or tongue problem if you catch it early. Um, plan smart. Keep a calendar for food planning uh, in your kitchen or on your uh, digital device so you'll know what you cooked when or when folks are bringing you food. If you have a problem with food intake and side effects, write them down. Keep a food diary or food tracker. We have a great one on our website, My Pearl Point. Make a list of foods that uh, you are well tolerated by you. Then when friends and family members come by and want to help, you can give them a, maybe a dish to make or a couple things to share with a group that might want to cook for you. Um, Often, if there are several people that want to help uh, deliver food, you might use some of the online sites to help coordinate, it, coordinate that. They're free. One is called Meal Train. Another is called Take Them a Meal. So it helps other people be able to give you a variety of foods so you won't end up with three chicken broccoli casseroles in, in one week. If you need help with food resources, check out Meals on Wheels. Um, your local food pantries, or uh, any church feeding programs that might be able to help you. Some people find they'd just rather have their meals purchased and delivered to them, uh, either paying for it themselves or maybe a friend or family member might. Uh, there are many organizations that do that now. MealsToHeal.com is a cancer-centered meal delivery service, which a lot of people enjoy. Other resources, just to name a few, might be Mom's Meals or Send a Meal. So before you get, get into trouble with your side effects, try to start smart and make it easy for you to just play in and keep, keep a list of what's going on that you can talk to your healthcare team. So to summarize, you can do it. You can find strategies that affect, um, that can help um, overcome the triggers for taste, smell, and sore mouth problems. Um, enlist your support team. Ask people to help. Uh, let them know what food you might need or what grocery items you might need. Um, be adventurous. Open yourself up to new food ideas or tastes that you haven't tried in a long time. They may be just the flavor or texture that works for you right now. And do check out reliable resources on the web about nutrition and cancer. And be open and honest with your healthcare team about what's going on. All right. So now I'm going to turn it back to Abby for questions. Hey, thank you, Margaret. Um, so let's see. It looks like we do have a couple of questions. Um, so one, if I'm trying to lose weight during cancer treatment, is that okay? Is that bad for me? That's a great question, Abby. Um, weight loss during cancer treatment often is not recommended. When we lose weight, often a lot of the weight is, becomes muscle that we lose. And you actually need your muscle for strength during cancer treatment. And there's some other reasons not to lose weight. So before attempting to lose weight, 
talk to your doctor or in, in healthcare team about that. Um, and here's another one. Um, if I don't have sore mouth, is it okay for me to still eat citrus and tomatoes? That's a good question, too. Uh, generally, citrus fruits and juices and tomatoes are healthy foods. So if you're not having any problem with sore, sore mouth, tongue, or lips, sure, it's, those foods are usually fine to use. Okay, and one last question, um, does freezing food make it lose its nutritional value? Freezing food, okay, so if you make food ahead or buy some frozen uh, foods, no, it doesn't um, impact it greatly. In fact, it's a great way to save you time and effort uh, by cooking ahead and then freezing foods for later use. So it can be a very worthwhile way to help you address your nutritional needs. Okay, and it looks like that's all the questions we have now, um, but if any of you all have questions later, you can email us at guidance at pearlpoint.org, and we'll answer those questions on an upcoming blog post. And um, we invite you to engage with Pearl Point online. Um, you can like Pearl Point Cancer Support on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. Um, our handle is at my Pearl Point. You can also follow us on Pinterest, connect with us on LinkedIn, or watch us on YouTube. And then, of course, you can visit our site, mypearlpoint.org. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Um, again, remember you can visit us at mypearlpoint.org for more resources for your cancer journey. Um, you can also join us for our next webinar on Tuesday, March 24th at noon. Um, we are also co-presenting a webinar with Debbie's Dream Stomach Cancer Foundation. Um, this webinar will be on clinical trials and nutrition for stomach cancer. And this webinar will be Wednesday, April 1st at noon. Um, you can find this information on our website. And again, we'd just like you to thank you for attending today's webinar, and please take the survey at the conclusion.